As an elephant eats What are you at Getting terribly fat What do you think Will come Of that Okay guys Question of the week Is Having to do with our topic For tonight's podcast As Per normal I guess yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is, what is your favorite Raul Dahl book, and what is your favorite movie adaptation to one of his books? And, Philip, let's start with you. Well, I've only read Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator, or, yeah, I think that's what it is. Which is the sequel. I don't remember. Yeah, that's I, a, that's I a thought sequel. It was, well, whichever one. I just was like, hey, I wonder if this has anything to do with that book, and then I just started reading it, and it's the only one I've ever read. And I like Matilda, the movie. Yeah, that's a good one. I was thinking that... It's got a really good soundtrack, and uh, really memorable characters, and I Mrs. Believe, Trench Bull's uh, awesome. Danny DeVito directed that one. Yeah, he definitely did. And his wife starred in it, too. Uh, well, they were both in it. Rio Perlman, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, either way, Mrs. Trench Bull probably could have been... Do uh, you think she could have played Annie Wilkes? I think that Mrs. Trench Bull could have played the mountain in Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> she was massive good and point. very scary. <laughs> She's like a professional shot putter. Yeah. And I'm not sure what happened to the little girl that played in that. I, I'm not. I don't think she's Mary still Wilson? acting. Yeah, I think, no, she's not. Uh, but I think I looked it up. She went to like law school or something, didn't she? Well, she went to school like yeah. every, you know, just had a career in something else. Yeah, I, I'd say my favorite book is probably Fantastic Mr. Fox, but my favorite movie adaptation probably the James and the Giant Peach. I really like that the Henry Selleck animation, mm-hmm. uh, that Tim Burton. Didn't he have something to do with that? I, I think. Don't know. Uh, who cares? <laughs> well, Henry Selleck did, not anybody else. Yeah, I, I know Selleck definitely directed it and did the, all the stop motion for it, but I'm not sure. I thought Tim Burton presented who it or something. Who cares? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Another Danny DeVito flick, by the yes. way. <laughs> Screwed. D. Hart, you said that you hadn't really ever read any Raul Dahl, right? Nope. I had no idea who he was. And uh, I never even watched Willy Wonka until a few years ago. So yeah. there. <laughs> Mark would probably call you a communist or, or a terrorist, terrorist yeah. or a child murderer or something. <laughs> child murderer? You called me that time on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> he said I hadn't seen Rocky until a couple weeks ago, and that mean that my opinion was less valuable than a child murderer. <laughs> okay. That's a little bit different than calling you a child murderer. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> He's just saying you're... He compared yeah. me to a child murderer and that, said I was worse than yeah, one. Yeah, I was going to say... Your you're, opinion. You're, wor- <laughs> you're worth less than a child murderer. I think we're splitting hairs here. I think it's all pretty, pretty <laughs> generally murdery. horrible. This is all very child murdery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a little strange to me. I, I guess that was like a staple in my childhood. I mean, I guess you're old, what, about 34, you said? Uh, 30, 33, 33. You're somewhere around there. 33. Okay, you're 33. <laughs> I had to do the math. So, I mean, <laughs> you're really only, you're my brother's age, so, yeah. you know, but, so that still was right around your time. I don't know, it just, it's like, uh, I, I had seen pieces of Willy Wonka, but never sat down to watch it. Mm-hmm. And like, it was on, it was like, I would catch the end on the way to something that I would prefer to watch. No, yeah. Because I didn't, it's like, I, I was a weird kid, I didn't get into, like, a lot of kids' entertainment. Mm-hmm. And I'm still not into it. <laughs> well, Ronald Dahl is pretty twisted stuff for the most part. Which raises the question, is Fantastic Mr. Fox a children's book? Yeah. I mean, I know that he wrote a book, and it was called that. Yeah. But is it for kids? I mean, technically it is for kids, but should it, is, it be but for kids? It's very demented <laughs> shit to read to kids. I mean, I've always thought that all of his A lot of stuff. his books are. I mean, The Big Friendly Giant has a lot of dark themes in it. I mean, a lot of, of like, loneliness and... Well, uh, it, you know that... They all do. And, well, I was going to say, really not, not just loneliness, shit. but um, but prejudice as well. You know, right. so it's like... There's... What about the torture chamber of Matilda? Yeah. That's insane. <laughs> and A fucking torture chamber that she just is put into. And Willy Wonka is not exactly, like... He's the devil. Yeah, yeah I was going <laughs> to say, he's fucking weird. Like, <laughs> I mean, if, if there were, like, two more kids... This would have been movie seven. You know? 
Oh. And he pretty much knocks them off per a, one of the, the seven, seven deadly, deadly sins. And you don't see them die? Yeah. But you're pretty sure that they die. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, he says he's drowning <laughs> and he's in a tube filled with liquid on his way somewhere. <laughs> he's probably not going to get air anytime soon. Yeah. Not only that, and then one of, one of them goes to the furnace. Yeah. That's one of them gets turned into a crazy balloon that can barely even be, like, rolled out of the room. Yeah. Well, let's get into the episode. All right. I'm one of your hosts, Stephen the Rose Rosenberg. Bill the Kill Collins. Andy Hart. And welcome to Motion Picture Meltdown to our Raw Doll episode, where we will be podcasting the original Willy Wonka and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, as well as the 2009 uh, animated movie, Fantastic Mr. Fox. We're gonna be raw dogging it. Oh man! Uh, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Which goes perfectly with his kind of fiction. Yeah. And the, and the, the podcast is now over. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> so let's start with Willy Wonka and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, which is from 1971, directed by Mel Stewart. I love how you just modified the name of the movie. Like, slightly. Wow. Well, <laughs> you called it Willy Wonka and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Right. Which is not what it's Oh, no. Willy Wonka and the... <laughs> I, I combined both of them. Together. Yeah, my bad. Based on the book, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Right, right. It's Willy Wonka and the Charlie... Willy <laughs> and the Charlie Factory. <laughs> well, it, it pretty much is. <laughs> Just manufacturing Charlies. <laughs> yeah. So, Mel Stewart directed... Such movies as <laughs> I Love My Wife. Uh, I've not seen it. No, I haven't seen any of his movies, I don't think. You've From seen it, this one. Mean Doug Blues. Yeah, The White Lions. I don't think I've seen I think most of the done. most of those are TV movies. Oh, so he just kind of came out of nowhere with this one. As far as one that's memorable, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it stars Gene Wilder, who is definitely the biggest actor in this movie. And then mostly child actors. Jack Albertson plays Grandpa Joe, who... Reminds me of this guy I met named Merlin. I he used to work with him at one of my old jobs. Dude looks just fucking like this guy. It was kind of creepy whenever I wa- was watching this. Then I realized that this guy died in like 1988. <laughs> I was like, or, or so, so you thought. <laughs> yeah. Then he, he retired from acting and then went out and started working in fucking Nab, Indiana or something. Yeah. <laughs> just working at a copper plant. Yeah. Under funny. the name Merlin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who the fuck names their kid Merlin, by the way? <laughs> somebody uh, that likes medieval fiction yeah somebody who's very into D and D. yeah <laughs> alright so let's just go ahead and get into the movie Charlie Willy Wonka and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory <laughs> and everyone else in the factory is yeah. apparently the name of the movie <laughs> yeah so the movie starts out in the candy store where apparently the theme is if you're rich you get free candy but if you're poor you can't afford free candy <laughs> We don't see them paying for it. It's assumed. <laughs> I don't think it's really assumed when he I, he opens when, the when bar. You're, when you're middle class, in other words, is what you're saying, and you can afford some chocolate, you get you get free chocolate. <laughs> you don't have to be rich necessarily. <laughs> yeah, because the super rich people just own the, they the they factory. have the chocolate shipped to them. Yeah, <laughs> no, they're they're frequent uh, candy buyers. Yeah, yeah. so they just, probably have a tab because this is 1970 or 60 yeah. So they're just like, just put it on my candy tab. Yeah. Yeah. Send, send a bill to parents, I mean, their fuck. parents for candy. <laughs> yeah. The guy was opening the bar up and he was just like, well, just have free run with my candy store. He would just be poor so fast. He's well, like, well, five minutes later, out of business. And of course he's singing that Candyman song that's like from the 40s or whatever. And I thought it was from this. Was it? I don't think it was, man. I think I know Sammy Davis Jr. does the song. Or yeah. did the song when he was live. <laughs> But uh, it's a, he was up for the part, but they didn't put him in the movie because so, he was too big of a name. Did he write the song? <laughs> It'd be really funny if he wrote the song for this movie and then they gave the part to somebody else. Uh-huh. <laughs> it would just be typical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I thought it was before this movie, but maybe not. Somebody can fact check me on that, I guess. But I thought nobody it, gives a shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was just while singing the song, just handfuls of like fucking peppermints just or whatever. Throwing the fuck them it, out. <laughs> yeah. Well, what it is, is some of these kids have not ever had any candy, so he's just basically a crack dealer. Yeah. He's like, here, free candy for everybody, $25 tomorrow. <laughs> this is a loan shark. What, <laughs> what makes you think that those kids have never had candy? Because they're acting like maniacs. Yeah, that's well, just regular kids. Yeah, not only that, but he was just, like, force-feeding them, like, soda. I'm just saying, soda. that's a crack dealer tactic, to give away the samples for free, and then they come back when they're addicted. Fair enough. You want some candy? Here you some go. Some rock candy. For free. Don't eat this, though. This is for smoking. 
Just Leon Phelps. Ironically, no also known as the Candy Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he carries a huge hook, too. <laughs> That's a different Candy Man. <laughs> no, but I only say that he's that only the middle class people get free candy because it's seemingly free like just fountains well, of candy everywhere everybody a, take whatever you want and it's like oh I'm too poor to go into the free candy store yeah and that's the look that Charlie's giving and then not only later when he goes to eventually get his Wonka bar he's in the candy store and the candy and he he gets the candy bar and the the store owner just like <clears throat> money <laughs> he knows money. that he knows that he's not good for it yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like he he knows the poor kids from the from the uh, middle class and rich kids because he just does. <laughs> He's got them all. He's their up. dealer. <laughs> he knows that at Charlie's house there are four people sleeping in the same bed <laughs> for twenty years straight. With so good. very very dirty pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, except for one of them miraculously recovers whenever he decides he realizes he can go to the chocolate factory. Yeah, he's factor. fucking running. He's like, holy crap! Go. Time for me to stop being so disabled. <laughs> it's like, well. Uh, all right. <laughs> it's like just make sure that the <laughs> that the government doesn't find out or I'll lose my disability. <laughs> so yeah, basically, we've pointed out that Charlie is poor as fuck and his yeah. family's poor as fuck because his mom is at home taking care of his four grandparents, which are all, all bedridden, and for his, twenty years. And his dad is. I'm saying like at this point, just drown them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're they're ancient. They're not doing anything. Well, that got really dark really quickly. <laughs> it's Roald Dahl. I was, I was going to say, he would drown them. Promise you. <laughs> if he felt like it would serve the uh, story, he would totally do it. So, I don't know where his dad is. He's just... We're assuming dead. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Or he got tired of the fucking 20-year grandparent taking care of him. He was like, like, fuck yeah, you guys. I'm out of here. I don't even care if they're my parents. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> his parents and just fucking leaves. Oh, shit. There's then rumors that... Willy Wonka ha- is going to possibly open the uh, gates of the chocolate factory because they've been closed now for... Because there's illegal law, or there's illegal labor practices going on inside <laughs> of the factory, and so that's what he doesn't want anyone to know about. Right. But the reason he closed is because Slugworth, kept the opposing candy factory owner, kept sending spies in to steal, right, to all, steal his... all of his magical secrets. Right. His recipes. It's like, oh, these recipes are magic. That's how he does it. <laughs> well... Not really, he just throws weird shit like boots and clocks and fucking... <laughs> no, I know, but what I'm saying is, it's not just that he has a mag- he has a recipe, it's like, no matter what you would throw into a batch of cookies, it's not going to come out and taste like a turkey dinner or whatever. <laughs> like, he's literally just using magic, and it's like, oh, that's the secret. Yep. Well, it's satanic magic. Right. Because, <laughs> as you stated, he's the devil. He's the devil. <laughs> Notice all the pentagrams throughout the movie. No, that, that wasn't there. <laughs> yeah. They, they probably there. were in there. Just, just you know, hidden. Just look. They were covered up with uh, whipped cream. And schnozberry <laughs> wallpaper. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. He just got done re-wallpapering that room so that, you know, for the cameras and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> just had demonic carvings in it and shit. He's going to open his gates to five people and... And their guardians. Five children. Mm-hmm. And their legal guardians. The funny thing is, is he never really specifies that it has to be children... Uh, open the ticket. Right, but nobody else eats chocolate bars, apparently. I, g- I guess not. I guess, <laughs> I guess just some random fucking 42-year-old guy walking down the street is like, well, I feel like a Willy Wonka bar today. It's like, you can't have one. <laughs> well, that's another rule that the candy dude knows. He's like, no no poor people, no adults, just only their children so that I can get them addicted to hey, crack. A, an adult could buy a candy bar, they just couldn't buy the ones on the ticket because there was like, the one he spent a dollar on that was not the one. That was not this, even the same kind as the one I had a ticket. And go, going back to the candy man real quick, I guess it's just my really sick, fucked up mind going back to this. But I just got the, I got a creepy vibe from the candy man anyway. I don't know if you guys felt like that. Like he just had this creepy face on him. And after he threw out all that candy, because everybody associates candy, children, and creepy people. Yeah. And well, it's like after he throws out that candy, he's just like. Come on back here, children. There's <laughs> even more candy in the basement. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's what I was thinking. I was just like, are they going in the back room right now? And yeah. then they just start swarming the candy. And There's I was like, even oh. more candy in my pants. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've got some popsicles in my pants. Really, what it is is context. Yeah. Because the Candyman song, in the context of Candy Store, is like, yeah, that's eccentric. Now imagine the Candyman song in the context of, oh, I don't know, a panel vein. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
sort of like in a loudspeaker, and there's yeah. just like one door open Who in the back. Who can make a rainbow? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very murdery. Yeah. As you know, per Roald Dahl. You know he smoked one of those kids in the face with that door whenever he lifted yeah. it up? <laughs> <laughs> Had to have. We gotta keep on saying. <laughs> yeah. Show must go on. <laughs> kids fucking bleeding on the floor. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Well, Here, have some peppermints, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly how they treat children in uh, in cinema. That's just how it is. Yeah. <laughs> Try you, they just drown him. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Fuck it. They're a notch, a, just the slightest notch above animal actors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who are, in the animal actors are right above the dwarf actors. <laughs> Speaking of which, this probably paid the rents of many, many, pretty much all the dwarf actors in uh, 1971. Yeah. A very depressing fact about this movie is they had to ship in dwarves because they filmed in Germany. And they had to ship in. You, you, you say that like they, they brought them in in crates. Or of course and, they did. And also but, they, they and also they went to the magical fantasy forest to get them. Yeah, by the way, which is where you get dwarves. Yeah, but there weren't any there weren't any dwarves there because of the Holocaust. <laughs> oh, oh, depressing. Whoops. <laughs> We accidentally killed off everyone we thought like, was hey, genetically inferior. You know what? <laughs> Bring them back in. We won't kill them this time. <laughs> Do you really need to film in Germany? No. Uh, well, to make it murdery enough, you might have to. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I guess. And depressing <laughs> enough. So let's talk about the contestant winners. Yeah, they're all just... Our contest winners. They're basically yeah. the worst children imaginable. That's all you really have to say. I think Augustus Gloop may have been the least bad of all of them. He was a greedy little fat fuck, but... He's just a hungry little piggy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In fact, I think that was his first response when the, the reporters were asking him how he felt about winning, and he just said, hungry. Yeah. And then his dad ate the microphone, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you noticed that. <laughs> no, but they put like the that. fucking microphone in his face to get a comment, like, and he just <laughs> eats it. I was like, okay, well, he's going to die. <laughs> it's like, well, microphones generally aren't edible, possibly for the Willy Wonka news they are. Yeah, which is why his fucking mom took him to the factory, because yeah. his dad was in fucking cardiac arrest. Yeah. His dad tried to eat him, and so they had to kill him, <laughs> kill him off. Yeah. Then you have Veruca Salt, who is just a cunt. Spoiled brat. <laughs> yeah. Really all the children are spoiled, but except for Charlie. Yeah, that's like the, they are. That's like the general... The theme, which, for sure. Know, why the Oompa Loompas always warn you against spoiling your children throughout the movie. Yeah. Well, and Veruca straight up calls her dad's workers twats. Oh, what's the matter with those twats down there? I mean, just straight out says twats. Literally twat. says twats. Maybe, <laughs> I don't know. Which was not uh, a curse word in 1971. We're, we're assuming that uh, she's in England, right? Because of her accent? Yeah, it's, it's in the UK. That's where they put the, the little stickers okay. over the aisle. Maybe it's like the word cunt over there. Over here... Not very pleasant. It's not a very pleasant thing to say. <laughs> right. People don't react well. Over there, it means like, buddy. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's not. I don't, a, it's I don't a, think it's she a, was calling them it's buddies. It's a little rougher than buddy, but you know. <laughs> she said I see what you're twats. saying. Twats. <laughs> I know, but that we're thinking of America twats. <laughs> yeah, we have way more advanced twats, twats here. Twats like. <laughs> yes. Is She's, it an elevator or a lift? This is what we're talking about. <laughs> She's the only child actor from this movie that went on to keep acting to current times. Like, she's still a big TV actor. And then you have Violet Beauregard, who's the ridiculous gum chewer. World champion. The world champion gum chewer. <laughs> Not much to say about her, really. Just worthless character. Yeah, she... First of all, there's no such thing as a world champion gum chewer. There never would be. Roll dolls a moron. <laughs> Moron, because he's writing children's books. And then you've got, uh, who's, oh, Mike TV. And he's the one that literally can't even look away from the TV for a second while he's talking to the reporters. And of course, Willy Wonka has a horrible thing to happen set up for each of these children. Yeah. Oh, the whole thing was planned from the fucking beginning, by the way. How could he have gotten specifically those kids? He knew. Yeah, he did, though. <laughs> Well, he knew after they won. Like, he, he said it, he knew who won, because he talked about how he read about them in the paper. Mm -hmm. And so he knew who won, and then he had his little Oompa Loompas go out and research all these kids. No, he had a... <laughs> oh, Slugworth, the fake, spoiler <laughs> alert, fake Slugworth go out and, and research yeah. all these kids. It's like, he's, he's eyes on the ground. It, he must have known ahead of time, because the guy was always right there. Mm-hmm. Whis Anytime. Whispering sweet nothings into their ears. <laughs> well, he's got to make them. 
got to make them the offer. Yeah. <laughs> and I think the way uh, this happened was uh, Willy Wonka uses jo- dark chocolate powers to uh, <laughs> <laughs> to determine the winner, to uh, who would get tickets, and then, uh, you know, prey on their weaknesses. He's got, like, a chocolate crystal ball. I'm like that's what he, that's what he looks in in it. I'm Why sorry. Why would it be a rock candy? <laughs> okay. Something you know clear. Something that actually can, you can look into. <laughs> Chocolate crystal. So he goes to the, or he he opens the gates. All the kids go. Oh, of yeah. course Charlie wins. Right, Charlie wins by random chance. He just finds money on the street and then goes back and buys chocolate with it because his family's so poor. So he said, "Fuck it, I'm just going to steal this money." Yeah. <laughs> and uh, speaking of which, like. This was written in 1964. This movie takes place in 1971. Mm-hmm. Why is chocolate a fucking dollar? That's how much <laughs> chocolate costs now. Yeah, basically. It would have been like four cents. Is that how much he found on the street? Was a dollar? Oh, but it was in Germany. Yeah. <laughs> Their yeah, money is well, worthless. We don't know where the, the actual place takes where it takes place at. They, ne- they never talk about where it takes place. We're, well, we would also assume that he's in England because of the way everyone talks. Right, right. Okay. But... Is, does he say a dollar is how much he costs? Because he hands him a coin f- for a chocolate bar, and then he gives him change back, and he buys another chocolate bar with that. Mm-hmm. So it could be a bit about like fifty cents well, or something. whatever it is. It seemed excessive for the time. Yeah, I agree. And this is the part where the candy man is just like, mm-hmm, "I'll yeah, take that money. I'll take all of that money you have." <laughs> you fucking asshole. And it? then he finds the golden ticket, and everybody just decides to mob his ass. And then one guy who just is some random dude off the street's like, Charlie, run home! It's like, run home because these kids are going to murder you <laughs> and steal your golden ticket. Yeah. You don't understand. They will kill you. They have been eating 2,000 pounds of chocolate a day just to get this thing that you just happen yeah. to get. And his teacher's laughing at him because he only got two bars and like everybody else in the class got like 100 bars and 150 bars. I, why would you sure... want that much chocolate? It's insane. <laughs> I'm pretty sure his teacher was the neighbor from the Jeffersons. Oh, I, I, can't, I did watch it. I don't remember his neighbor, <laughs> It's been though. a minute. Yeah, I don't know that I've eaten 150 chocolate bars in my entire life. I probably have, but... Like, are full, we counting like, mini ones? No, I'm talking, like, big chocolate <laughs> oh, bars. Full uh, chocolate bars? Yeah. Probably yeah. not. No. I mean, between all the s'mores I've eaten, maybe. <laughs> but that's still a crazy amount. Yeah, it's a lot. And yeah. if you added up all the mini versions... Yeah, maybe. <laughs> of, of all the chocolate that I've eaten, it probably comes close to that, or maybe even goes way beyond that. But definitely not... In the same year. <laughs> Let alone the same week or week. whatever it is. Yeah, I think it's a week, but holy shit. <laughs> well, apparently they need to just do that. And that's well, you all you saw all the wasted chocolate bars in the trash cans and shit like that. Well, I mean, uh, Veruca Salt was, uh, they were just a factory unwrapping her, her uh, bars for her. Yeah. yeah. It's like, well, no ticket. Well, the, uh, well, I think in the movie they were up to like 17,000 or something like that. They had fucking crates of this shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and also during, totally that, during that teaching part, whenever they're like, Willy Wonka's closing the chocolate factory, he's like, class dismissed. Oh, fuck school. Yeah. Chocolate factory's opening. Yeah, there's no, uh, you mean opening the chocolate factory, you said it was closing it. Yeah, that's what I meant. Opening it after it had been closed for a while. Right, right, right. <laughs> opening it, its doors to the public so that people can actually see how the uh, sausage is made. And I do mean sausage. <laughs> and uh, he's got to keep out the OSHA inspectors. Yeah. Did you, <laughs> There's we, totally no workplace safety there. No. One, one more thing before Zero. we before we get into the chocolate factory. Did you guys notice the creepy knife guy that came up behind Charlie whenever he was looking at the factory at night? Like he was like just staring up and the, and the Wonka factory lights came on. And the guy walked up behind him and was talking about factory or whatever. Yeah. Did you see his little cart? There was just butcher knives and like <laughs> fucking like. I did not notice the butcher knives. Yeah, the there was all sorts of fucking knives. I was like, who are you talking about? No, I don't yeah, remember the knife the, the guy. Scary guy that walks up behind him in the <laughs> yeah, middle I, of nowhere. I don't remember that. It's like. Yeah. They say. <laughs> yeah, his cart is just butcher knives and fucking like. Just cleavers all over the fucking thing. I was just like, well, that's scary. Closed the door on my own three years ago. They say that no one ever comes in. When no one ever comes ever. out. How did they get the co- chocolate bars out? <laughs> they just, I'm telling you, they use magic. No, they use that All TV they thing. use is magic. They, they transport That would be them. such a preposterous waste of chocolate. I mean, <laughs> I guess no more than anything else in this movie. That was in the research center. They don't have that rolled out yet. Yeah, so see, that's just, you know, that's in, uh, they're beta testing that or whatever. Right. But ex- that's exactly R&D. what, it's like, uh, Jeff Goldblum should have learned that. 
from the fly. <laughs> yeah. like, hey, you know what? Just we'll just transfer chocolate and make billions. Exactly. <laughs> Or various other things that we could transfer. Or anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is when Willy Wonka appears for the first time with an ad lib limp, as I think everybody knows that. That's pretty common knowledge among Willy yeah. Wonka ers. Because it's like, what the fuck is he doing? Here? Yeah. <laughs> and well, and everybody thought he was fucking yeah. hurt at that and point. And he was scowling. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was like, boop, rolls out of it. <laughs> yeah. It's like that video of that dog that has its legs crushed, but and then it just, oh, no, they're not crushed. It's just pretending. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Asshole dog. <laughs> just pretending to be hurt. Or I have a dog that did that when he was a puppy, and he, he had an IV in his arm, and for, like, three days he was just milking it and, like, doing the most limpy. And then, like, when we weren't looking, I, like, peered up on the hallway, and he was, like, running down the hallway. And then walking to the kitchen was like... He's like, ugh, I'm hurt so bad. Just feed me steaks. Yeah, please. I need them to get back at my full strength. I just pointed at him at that point and I was like, busted. You're full of shit. <laughs> Speaking of being full of shit, Willy Wonka. <laughs> yeah, he brings the children in the front door and this is where they sign the ridiculous contract that just gets smaller and smaller as it goes down the page. That was a total, like, Mel Brooks movie thing. Oh, yeah. I thought. Well, I mean, it's everything that has to do with Gene Wilder is very Mel Brooks. Yeah. And it's, you know, He's in a lot of rightfully, Mel Brooks movies. Rightfully so. Yeah. Now, he's a great actor, in my opinion. Like, yeah, he's definitely. always been extremely good. He he hasn't aged very well. I think he's pretty far up there in age. I think he's in his 70s now. But I bet he's a real asshole, though. You think so? Yeah, he just seems like he's... he's got an asshole face? He'd be a real <laughs> asshole in person. I don't like his asshole face. <laughs> Bullshit name. <laughs> yeah, Gene Wilder is... Was born in 1933. Best oh, known yeah, for uh, the producers, that, yeah. Young Frankenstein and Blazing, Blazing Saddles. Saddles. Oh, yeah. And then that other one with Richard Pryor. What movie, What was that movie called? Stir Crazy? Was that it? I think so. And there's, well, he was in Stir Crazy with Richard Pryor and then uh, Hear No Evil, See No Evil, where uh, one of them is deaf and the other one's blind. I think that's the one I'm thinking of. The Yeah, the Hear No Evil, See No Evil. They all sign this ridiculous contract, in which he brings up later because at some point you're just like, well, obviously they can't fucking read this. So. I mean, it's like the user agreement for anything. <laughs> now. It's like, oh, it's, oh, I'll read this. You, you get done reading it, and you're like, oh, that wasn't so bad. And you're like, oh, there's 14 more pages. No, I'm just going to click through this. Yeah, or or the disclaimer at the end of a, like, commercial on the radio. Right. <laughs> well, I Eat think... Subway Subs! <laughs> Subway Subs are made of wood. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think the, the main part of uh, the contract was the hold harmless yeah, part, where it's very prominent. It's like basically, I'm not responsible for if you get when you get harmed. <laughs> yeah, it's like if you get harmed by these various traps specifically engineered for you. <laughs> yeah, you can't sue me if your daughter just happens to be thrown in the furnace, which she will. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Thrown There's only a fifty percent chance. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Only runs every other well, day. Only every other day. <laughs> I feel like that's a pretty big chance. <laughs> yeah, when it comes to being burned alive, ideally you want it to be lower than 50% chance. <laughs> yeah, ideally. <laughs> or drowning, yeah. or, you know, being trapped in a television, or whatever it was. Yeah, all those things. <laughs> they seem bad. So the first room they go into is the chocolate waterfall room. Yep. The the candy smorgasbord lane, as I like to call it. Yeah, There's... bacteria city. <laughs> because a lot of that shit was actually edible. The yeah. chocolate river was, was chocolate. real, yeah. It was <laughs> chocolate and cream and all sorts of shit. It's like, why would you do that? I don't Dairy know. There's stuff no, yeah, There's well, no did, did we? Didn't. Yeah, I was gonna say I knew a lot of it had spoiled. So stupid. They wanted to look like real chocolate, man. You know what looks like real chocolate? A million other things. <laughs> dirty water. A bucket of brown paint. Which, which is really just what that looked like, was just dirty water. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, I would have never They just imagined. piped the Ohio River into that room, and then that's But then again, was. the little kid was actually, like, funneling it into his mouth. Like, so, I don't know that... Yeah, but they could have cut away. Yeah, it didn't they, have yeah. to be... You know? Yeah. No, oh, I know it didn't have to, but... A lot yeah, of things that's very the... insane. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> and then all the mushrooms had, like, whipped cream in them, and... The trees had giant gummy bears growing off of them. A lot of the things that he's supposedly, like, showing, like, the, you know, secrets of the factory to all these kids really weren't useful. I don't know how that being open could have ever made him lose his secrets. It's like, oh, look, wallpaper that you can taste. It's like, uh, all right, well, I still have no fucking clue how you made that. <laughs> well, 
I don't well, know, that's what I don't know how you can have a boat that could go through a river of chocolate, <laughs> which would be impossible. Or a room that doesn't move that you turn around and the door leads to a completely different place. Yeah. Any of it. It's all magic. It's literally, he's a sorcerer. <laughs> this is what I'm saying, like, there's no reason he should have ever needed to close his doors, because all he was doing was worshipping the Dark Lord. <laughs> like, his competitors just had to start worshipping him too, and then they would have been just as good. Oh, wait a second. That leads me to a very, it's a, I'll come back to it. <laughs> yeah, because it's at the end. But, uh, yeah, so I, this is where Augustus, Augustus Gloop goes down. Yeah, he drowns in a river of chocolate, and he just gets <laughs> sucked through the tube. There's no way he, was, he, would, be, he would be alive. He well, would, he, how like, long would it be if you were crammed into a tight space, and it was completely filled with liquid except for you? You would drown so fucking fast. Not to mention the pressure building up from his stomach down would have just completely well, crushed his It would have crushed all air that he did have. Right, so, uh, gotta give him a little bit more credit, because the liquid, is, when he gets sick in the pipe, is all on the acid. <laughs> right. So he's got air in front of him, so he can still breathe. He's just being funneled up to, uh, where was it? The boiler. The boiler. <laughs> <laughs> he's just being funneled into the boiler. He still has air. He's not drowning. He's going to boil a lot. <laughs> Completely different. I feel like you have to be in water to boil a lot. Chocolate. Or chocolate. <laughs> and then if you were in that liquid, you would probably drown. Before you boiled to death. <laughs> Not if you were a big old hungry piggy. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying you would eat his way out? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. This is also where... He this... died. It's all there is to it. <laughs> <laughs> and how nonchalant was Willy Wonka about it. He doesn't give a fuck about anything. <laughs> oh, no. He's clearly a sociopath. Police. Paramedics. <laughs> <laughs> Come, save him. <laughs> He's only being boiled alive. It's not a big deal. No, don't. Get the flute and may <laughs> not sing a song. Well, he first, before that, he sang uh, World of Pure Imagination, which yeah. I like to call the world of double penetration <laughs> or, the world, or, or the world of premature ejaculation. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Philip hates my, my parodies. I don't, I don't hate it. That's not true. It's just, why do they all have to be have to do with dildos or... Yeah. They're porn parents. The dildo connection he sang No, the it's the dildo collection. Oh, the dildo collection. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Why would Kermit have a dildo collection? <laughs> because Satisfy this piggy. He yeah. doesn't have it. He's it's like, someday we'll find it. He'll find the, the dildo, dildo collection. Yeah. The red one, the blue one, and beads. <laughs> <laughs> So nasty. Oh, <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. So, various traps for each children as they go. Each uh, children? Yes. <laughs> this each is the second week August, in the Augustus, he's drowned and boiled alive. <laughs> and very similar to that bird delicacy from uh, Hannibal. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh... What happens? She chews the bubble gum that's not ready for human consumption. Well, first, like Dehart said, the little Oompa Loompas come out and do their 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 bullshit song number. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. Their song just to rub it in the parents' face that they're terrible. It's like <laughs> shouldn't have been a fatty. <laughs> yeah. It's like that we're, we're singing song. you this song as a cautionary tale, but your son is already boiled alive <laughs> while we're singing this. Right like, away. <laughs> but you know, just in case you have another child, I guess. This is why you don't want to fucking... Well, they would have, but he ate him. <laughs> <laughs> Not only that, but it's like, the Oompa Loompas are clearly warning the other children that don't act like a fuck. Something bad will happen to it's you. like, in five minutes, something bad will happen. <laughs> We're not warning you for the future. There's no need to pay attention for a long time. Just yeah. until you get out of this factory, you need to be very vigilant. Because <laughs> you are going to die. You'll you either be burned... your fucking... <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's really how the song should have gone. Oompa loompa doopa tea dirter. <laughs> exactly. Which is hang, hang the most half ass way to make a song ever is to just have every other line be made up words so you don't have to rhyme anything. Yeah. It's not it's not difficult to rhyme something with dirter if your word is murder already. Yeah, no, it's not. It's hang out here long enough and there will be a Everlasting Gobstopper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, they go into the invention room next, and this is where, like I said, Willy Wonka just starts throwing fucking soccer cleats and fucking <laughs> pea coats and alarm clocks and shit into the mixes and just starts stirring it around. Like, oh, it needed an extra kick. 
Oh, it needed a coat because it's cold. <laughs> and an eye of Newt in the skull of a virgin. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, he's clearly not worshipping the dark arts. Yeah. Behind the machine, like, Oompa Loompas are sitting in a fucking pentagram form with candles lit and shit. Yeah. Like, you this no Yeah. And that roughly translates into the songs that they start singing. Yeah, exactly. Oompa Loompa, Doopity's Dayton. Yeah. <laughs> Doopity Dayton. So good. So, there's this gum machine, right? Mm-hmm. And it makes a triple course, a three meal. course, three it's course a, meal. It's a full three course meal in the form of one piece of gum, and they t- they talk about how it's like, oh, it's gonna be revolutionary for world hunger. It's like we'll just be able to ship everybody one of these. And- yeah, because that makes sense. Because you would just be not hungry from tasting something. Stephen, <laughs> nothing about this movie makes any logical sense. No, it doesn't matter. So it's not. It's not. It's still in the you know early stages of development. So when he gets to the blueberries, it just completely fills her with blueberries, making her purple and gigantic, which would kill her. <laughs> well, now they're going to go juice her. Yeah. Her stomach juice. would have ruptured <laughs> feet ago, before she ever got that big. She would just be bleeding out from the inside and very much dead. Do you know how they did that part? Or, like, they had her in, like, a little styrofoam suit, and then outside of that suit, they had a uh, another suit that they could inflate. Mm-hmm. And so they inflated the outer suit to make it look like she was like really big and then of course just painted her face fucking purple right and then they had to keep rolling her like during the song because i guess they had to decide that they had to do the song with her being there right rather than like all the other ones after they'd already fucking gone (laughs) and so she was losing basically losing consciousness because the blood flow was like leaving her brain and so they had to keep rolling her over so that she could get blood back into her brain Seems safe. <laughs> well, yeah. it's like they also had to fill the suit with hypodermic needles <laughs> yeah. for safety. The movie's about torture. <laughs> yeah, basically. You have to. It's like she has to be there for the torture. Yeah. It's like, oh, here we are in the uh, in the room that is full of fizzy lifting drinks, but don't drink them. I warn you, they're delicious. They're really delicious. They're so good, and they'll make you feel awesome, and you'll be able to fly. But don't drink them. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm gonna leave now, and. When you do drink them, I hope you don't accidentally float up into the huge fan specifically designed to grind you into a million pieces. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a, there's no reason. Why the fuck there. would that fan yeah. have been there? To pop the bubble. To punish Charlie <laughs> for being a bastard. Also, you kind of hate the parents just as much as the oh yeah kids because you're supposed to hate them more because they're just terrible at raising children. And yeah. That's the point of the movie. I think Stop I hate... feeding your children two thousand gallons of chocolate per day, and maybe they won't be a piece of shit. <laughs> maybe. I think I hate Violet's dad more than any of them, though. Like, he's such an just he's annoying a fuck. He's the one with the, the auto he's, sale business. He's a politician right. and a car seller. Right. So, yeah, he's, he's a big Jim Marine. <laughs> and he's, like, talking to him about the liquor that's all in the candy. And he's like, oh, you got something going on the side here? <laughs> you want to give me a part of that? And then Willy Wonka just says some other fucking quote that makes no goddamn sense. We are the candy dreamers of the dreams. It's like... <laughs> It's quicker. What? Uh, it's like you're not. It's like you're not responding. You're on another planet right now. Like he's clearly high the whole time. Yeah. It's like you ask him a straightforward question. It's like, oh, what kind of ingredients do you put in this? And he's just like, ingredients of the. <laughs> I don't know. It would say something that has nothing to do with ingredients. He's a bastard. Only the foolish are the kings of. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Bullshit. Yeah. After that, the fizzy lifting drinks happen because. He's trying to tempt all the children to do wrong so they can get out of the contract. Right. Oh shit, I, I fucking I made a lifetime of promise of chocolate. I gotta make sure that none of these kids get it. Right. <laughs> By the time they're like seventeen, they're just fucking like two thousand cho- pounds and size chocolate of the addicts house. and they're just like, Come on, come on, come on, give me <laughs> give me give just one bar, medicine. man. Just one bar. <laughs> In this situation, the roles are completely reversed. Charlie's grandpa. Yeah. And it's like, come on. It's like, what the fuck is going to happen to us? Because he's not... Not like those other kids are dead. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> yeah, no one's died since we've been here. <laughs> Several people. And he's even, like, talking shit about all the kids the, the entire time, too. Yeah. Because they're bastards. Well, and they are assholes. Because they Anybody can tell. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's true. But he's not afraid to stand up and be an adult, either. Like, he's the only parent figure there that doesn't just cave to everything that 
that uh, their child fucking won. So, like, and that's kind of apparent later when he actually stands up to uh, Willy Wonka. Right. But still, <laughs> Brainy brought up the question of, well, he did the exact same thing that all the other kids did. Why wasn't he punished? And the, I told her the simple answer is, is because he wasn't going to fucking sell out the company right. like all those other kids were. Well, I think there are a couple reasons. One, he didn't get caught directly. Yeah. Two, it wasn't his idea. It was Grandpa's. And I guess the third, he wasn't an asshole. Right. Well, the, well, the reason he didn't was because he didn't sell the secrets. Right. To, yeah, I mean, he, which he specifically easily could have. returned, he returned the, the Everlasting, everlasting Offer. Off right. I mean, it was no... You know, there was no question that, that he could that he could have fucked him over. Yeah. Right, that was the reason. Like even despite the fact that he was like, "You suck, you fucking little bastard, get the fuck out of my sight." <laughs> yeah. He's like, "Okay, but I'm still not gonna fuck you over because I'm not an asshole." You know, he scared the shit out of that kid whenever he did that scene. He's insane. Yeah. Uh, have you ever been in a room? Expect him to be yelling. Yeah. With a maniac. <laughs> yeah. We let's we skipped ahead because there's a part we skipped over that is very important to this podcast. Oh, I feel. like TV. Uh, no. No. The boat ride. Oh, the boat ride. <laughs> wow. Yeah. What about the boat ride? <laughs> Oddly enough, that creepy song that he's singing, only only song from the... Really? Yeah, that was in the book. He's singing in a little creepy. So I, there's no way of knowing what's going yeah. on. You're all going to die. Because the danger, danger must be growing. Because <laughs> the water's flowing. Yeah, and there, dude, it's like the in the background, one of the scenes I show is a guy with a centipede crawling over his face. Yeah, another one is uh, a chicken getting its fucking head hacked off. Yeah, there's a chicken, they're holding it down, and a butcher's knife comes down and hacks its head off. Classic children's movie. Yeah, and then there's another one with some close-up of the uh, an, an eyeball, and it's just like staring at them. It's like... Probably about to be penetrated by a nail. Or yeah, shit. <laughs> none of them fucking went through this part in any kind of like preparation for no, this scene. No, they had no idea. Yeah. They all were just stuck on this part, and they thought Gene Wilder was going mad because of what was going on behind him, because he was gradually getting louder and screaming and just staring at them all. That's why you see, like, Veruca Salt just, like, straight grab the guy next to her, and he's just like, <laughs> this motherfucker's going crazy! <laughs> crazy, Jesus! Incredibly fucked up. Yeah. Like, that part that separates seems... this movie from being a children's movie, in my opinion. That's... Raul Dahl's M.O. though. Like, he only makes scary-ass fiction. All the conversion to the movie, way, way more PG than what the actual book was. Yeah. All of them. Across the board. There's so much more fucked up if you actually read it. And you have no, like, if you're using your own imagination rather than, like, using well, I mean, the movie to... Well, I mean, him, like, going to, like, the Amazon and just enslaving a race to yeah. to, to work as his, uh... <laughs> He saves them, Philip. Yeah, and- yeah, he <laughs> saved them from their savage ways. No, no, he saves them from all the beasts that are eating it. It's the country that they're from is like that. Sounds like a made-up different. bullshit reason that somebody might use. It's Lumpaland. Huh? Lumpaland. Lumpaland. Yeah. I don't care where Lumpaland is, and they pretty much tell you where it is in um, in the book. Well, yeah. Then they describe all the ridiculously terrible beasts that that do nothing but hunt the Impalimpas and eat them. If that was actually true. Then they would just. Either once they were freed, there would just be billions of them from just overpopulation, <laughs> or there wouldn't be any left at a, in, in Impalumpa. Well, they're not allowed to repopulate, because they're slaves. Yeah, they've all been neutered. <laughs> and been forced to wear those stupid outfits. Except for the breeder Impalumpas. <laughs> they like uh, one pair. The cedar Impalumpas. I hate their suits, though, with like the little feet coming off the... the little overalls. Yeah. Oh, terrible. Yeah, and their think... awful face paint. <laughs> It's really scary fiction. All of all of his all of his stuff. James and the Giant Peach is creepy as fuck. I've only seen the movie and not read it, but yeah. it's got to be way worse than the book. Uh, the the creepiest part about James and the Giant Peach is the beginning when like the it talks about all the like the death that his parents go through because of the crazy sky rhin- rhinoceros and then Skynoceros. Yeah, and <laughs> then like the way that his evil ants treat him is just fucking awful. Yeah, like we said, there's a lot of dark themes in pretty much all of his books. Veruca Salt b- bites the dust because she wants oh, yeah. a fucking golden egg from a giant goose. Mm-hmm. But it turns out she was a bad egg. Oh, yeah. And thus was sent to the incinerator. <laughs> <laughs> Much like <laughs> Juice <laughs> making another Holocaust reference. Uh, I don't know if it was so much of that. <laughs> it's like, well, we only run Auschwitz every other day. <laughs> yeah. Because they, they never mentioned that they're in Germany. 
But it doesn't matter have to be in Germany where they there filmed, aren't any wars because of that very reason. Right, they right. Film this in Germany, people know that they did because it's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> and even though there's a happy ending, you still feel, feel very unsettled at the end of the film. It's like, oh, maybe not so happy. There's still four dead children. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk well, about this. <laughs> well, you know, Mike TV was alive yeah. when he left the room. Yeah, but he's. Destroyed forever. He's tiny. Well, he probably well, can't even eat the regular. Tap- they were taking him to the stretcher. Yeah, that stretching. would probably save him. <laughs> they were taking him to the tap room to be stretched. Yeah, because limb from limb. <laughs> everybody knows that whenever you have the tiny version of something, you can just stretch it out, and it'll be the big version, mm-hmm. and it'll snap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Children are very flexible. Yeah, of yeah. course. And what do you think about that creation, Philip? The TV particle transfer device. Well, it's no more bullshit than anything else, but it's pretty bullshit. It's like, and also insanely wasteful. It's like, oh, we have two thousand pounds of chocolate, and we can convert it into one chocolate bar, but at your house, so you don't have to drive and get it. <laughs> We're saving nothing. <laughs> yeah. Also, I don't know that I would eat that. No. I feel like there'd have to be something. There has to be cancer in that. There just has to be. <laughs> I don't know that eating it would give you cancer necessarily. It's just pure radiation. You just bite into it. <laughs> you bite into pure it and your radiation. entire body just turns... You just turn into fucking radioactive man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the goggles, they do nothing! Okay. They go into Willy Wonka's office, and Willy Wonka just sits the fuck down. Like there's like, nothing like, well, end of the tour. Yep, see ya. See you guys. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> no goodbye, no here's your voucher for unlimited chocolate, which we can feed your worthless family. Yeah. <laughs> And that's because he stole fizzy lifting drinks, and then you get to the point where he finds out uh, he's not going to get the infinite chocolate, and he loses the contract. And that's when Grandpa Joe goes batshit on his ass, and he's like, you're a crook! You're (laughs) just... You get nothing! (laughs) Dude, that scene is awesome. Like... I said good day! (laughs) Gene Wilder's face during that scene is just scary. You're like, holy shit, calm down. (laughs) I get it. He's a maniac. He will kill you. I don't know. I've seen it in so many movies. Or it's just typical when people fight and they somebody says like the, the wrong thing. And it's like, oh, well, now I want to act like I wasn't really mad in the first place and that it was all just a joke. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. Oh. Oh, I was just testing you the whole time. I wasn't actually... I wasn't having an episode. <laughs> I was just testing you. It's like, no, you went fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah. If you had had a knife, you yeah, you probably would have killed me with it. Mm-hmm. And then he reveals that the Slughorn uh, character that was, was actually trying to working steal for him the entire time. Right. Okay. So, I've got an idea on this. What if Willy Wonka really is practicing some dark arts? And he sets up a course that's designed to specifically ensnare children. <laughs> just so he can get one pure child <laughs> to sacrifice to the devil. <laughs> That is a perfect... Uh, that's exactly like, hey, what You know what? You and your whole family, come come into my factory where no one comes in and no one ever leaves. And, yeah. and live here forever. Live here forever. What well, is each the rest of your life. Yeah. It's not going to be very long. <laughs> because so, you're going to be murdered. <laughs> so I think what you meant to say at the beginning of this podcast was that Raoul Dahl is the devil. And all of his characters... Are pro- sacrificing children to him. To him. Yeah. Like various tasks... <laughs> to sacrifice, find the pure children like James from James and the Giant Peach and the little kid from the BFG. Yeah, oh, BFG, big friendly giant, big fucking giant. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's called the BFG, but it, the, he's named the big friendly giant. So, all these pure children are gathered together to be blended into a pure smoothie for Ralph well, to no, just, drink. Just yeah. the one. The other ones were they were. Uh, no, I mean, I, be, he just runs throughout I mean, his entire I mean, his thing. various oh, okay. stories. His various oh, okay. stories. I got you. <laughs> Sacrificing. Yep. So, Sounds yeah. like a sound logic to me. <laughs> Makes more sense than lickable wallpaper. Raw doll is the devil. Got it. Okay, you guys ready to move on to Fantastic Mr. Fox? Yep. All right. Fantastic Mr. Fox from 2009, directed by actually one of my favorite directors, Wes Anderson. And you can tell it's a Wes Anderson movie. Absolutely. Like, a lot of the themes are very similar to... The cast are very similar well, the cast to the Wes is, Anderson movie. Well, the cast is in everything. And I actually haven't seen The Grand Budapest Hotel, but I, I have it and I want to watch it. Yeah. But I have seen every other one of his movies, which is like Rushmore, Moonrise Kingdom, The Jeering Express, Royal Tenenbaums, uh, Life Aquatic. I generally oh, really like uh, his movies 
some of them are a bit, you know... Pretentious. <laughs> well, it's just like, a, it's not my cup of tea. Yeah, I understand. But, uh, I, I always like his visual style. Mm-hmm. And he has that in this movie. And it, even though it's... You even know, though it's he, animated, it's still He basically directed it by email, according to IMDb. Oh, really? Seriously? I didn't read much of the trivia on this, so... I That's yeah, insane. It's like, he, apparently he wasn't there for most of it. Hmm. Wow. It's like, he was just like a... In an yeah, animated it feature, really it, it doesn't really make sense for them to be there on a daily basis, especially for this kind of animation, because it's claymation. Who did the animation on this? Henry Sock was involved, mm-hmm. but then he had to... Skedaddle? Yeah. He had to <laughs> skedaddle out of there. Do something else. <laughs> gotcha. And my favorite of his movies is actually Moonrise Kingdom. I just watched that this past year, and I, I loved it. If you haven't watched that one, you should definitely check that one out as well. I like uh, the Royal Tenenbaums. I am interested in seeing the... Grand Budapest Hotel. Yeah, I'd like to see it too. So, Fantastic Mr. Fox. Um, Mr. Fox voiced by George Clooney. And I have a boner for George Clooney's voice. I fucking love his voice. Like, Everybody does, because he can convince you of anything. I know. Like, it doesn't I, matter how much of a bastard that you would know that he is in a, as a character. You're still just like, oh, but it's George. <laughs> I mean... He's always the same guy. Yeah. yeah he he only plays George Clooney. Yeah. Or Batman <laughs> as George Clooney. <laughs> well, he was just he George, is George Clooney. Clooney. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. It's that suave motherfucker, is basically and what you're saying. He's just he's just kind of charming. Seems like he doesn't really give a shit. Yeah. Danny Which Ocean. makes him more and charming. Like, that's that I can. Like, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> and then Meryl Streep plays Mrs. Fox and. Does a great job. Yeah, she's... As always, Meryl Streep, kicking ass, yeah. taking names. Jason Schwartzman, who is a staple among Wes Anderson films. Mm-hmm. I mean, also Bill Murray, another... Uh, staple, yeah. Wes I think, Anderson staple. I think uh, Jason Schwartzman has been in every one of his films since Rushmore. I know he was... Uh, Bill Murray and, and Jason well, sure Schwartzman uh, were Rushmore. A good portion of them, at least. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, like you said, Bill Murray is in almost all of them, too. Even if it's just a small part. Yeah. Some kind of piece in there. And also, many times, a leading role. Right. And I know how much you, we all I just love, love Bill Murray. Bill Murray. He's your favorite actor, isn't he? Probably. Probably, yeah. I, have, I don't really have a favorite actor. He is in my favorite movie, though, so yeah. that, would make, that would follow. And then you've got uh, Michael Gambon as Franklin Bean, and Michael Gambon is, of course, Dumbledore. <laughs> <laughs> got Willem Dafoe as the <laughs> crazy French... You mean shitty Dumbledore. Yeah, right. yeah, not you the mean, Richard Harris Dumbledore. Yeah, before. I was going to say, he's clearly not alive, yeah. or wasn't alive for this, My, is not alive now. I would say Michael Gambon is more Dumbledore because he was in, like, five That doesn't more make him movies. more Dumbledore. <laughs> he didn't figure out how to be Dumbledore until, like, the last two movies. <laughs> and it's like, dude, read a book, watch one of the other Harry Potter movies, you fucking hack. Just be Dumbledore. Dumbass. I think you just get used to him by that point. Though. No, I mean, he becomes less hysterical and less ridiculous, as he should. Right. He should never have been like that. <laughs> I agree. I do like Michael Gammon, though. I mean, he's he's a decent actor. He is a good actor. He's just terrible at being Dumbledore. Yeah. Willem Dafoe, who Philip loves from Speed 2. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why would you bring up Speed 2? <laughs> Out of all the Willem Dafoe movies you can mention, there are millions. <laughs> he plays the... Shitty French rat, who also is he supposed to be French? Yeah, well, he, he kind of seems French because of his shirt. Yeah, well, no, he doesn't. He's very mind like. Doesn't he have some, some like French lines in there too? I don't when he was like opening so. the door or whatever, and then he does a shitty West Side Story snapping. Yeah, he snaps at everybody and he <laughs> dances around a lot. That's his character. He's a dancer. And then Owen Wilson plays the coach who just crushes. Yeah, he's only got like a very small. Yeah, who's cameo. Crushes Mr. Fox's son's dream, hopes and dreams. Oh, <laughs> uh, well. You're, you'll never be as good as your dad. I mean, you'll probably never be good at all. He's like, you're, you're terrible. But you think I at least am a little bit. You've improved. You've improved. <laughs> let's, let's say that. You've, just, you've improved. Okay, so the story of Fantastic Mr. Fox is about two foxes that get caught in a fox trap of the woman fox reveals that she's she's pregnant pregnant. and so they decide at that time if we live through this never gonna steal we're not gonna steal chickens anymore because that or anything not gonna be thieves because that is too risky of a lifestyle to lead with a child right apparently right right even if you're a fox and that's pretty much what you're supposed to do (laughs) yeah your job literally is to steal eat chickens so be sly so he becomes a editorial writer in the paper. 
But you could never be able to make a living at <laughs> any, which is why they're so poor. So poor, right? And he says he's uh, tired of. Does he say I'm tired of being poor or tired of looking poor? Feeling poor. Feeling poor. Okay. He feels poor because they live under the ground. And she's like, "We're fucking foxes." Yeah. We live under the ground, and they are poor. Yeah. And we're poor. <laughs> we're dirt poor, and we live in dirt. Yeah. And their son is like. A little bit different, you know. He's going through his angsty teenage phase. He's not even. He, what is what's little, so different about him? He just is well, he weird. Likes, he wears a cape everywhere he goes for some reason. And and his, that's weird. And he tucks his sweatpants into just his socks. A little kid. And he drinks grape juice when everybody else likes apple juice. How old is he even? He's what was he? Twelve fox years old. Yeah. And this so is two, two years after he was born. Yeah. I love the conversion of fox years to human years. The I whole love movie. It. That's I so. Like, f- I love all the little differences. The only like one thing. That I liked at first, but didn't like because they transferred over to the human world of the story. Was when all the animals kept saying "cuss" instead yeah. of "cuss words." Oh, and they're, yeah. they're like, "Man, this is a real cluster cuss." <laughs> and I was just like, "This is awesome!" But then, cuss the, off. then the adults, the the humans, say it too. So I was just kind of like, "Man, I wish they kind of kept that in the animal world." So well, it was, it was they all just go ahead and uh, turn add it in cuss words. They have. The word just cuss, leave, just leave that part out. Swear, just don't like, cut. Oh well, fuck. Yeah, I mean, okay. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Just leave that part out. You know, just don't say anything yeah, yeah, at that yeah. point. And then you've got that clear distinction between the two worlds. Animals don't know how to cut. <laughs> right. <laughs> so they're basically Stephen King. Yeah. <laughs> so, Mr. Fox goes and meets with Weasel, who is voiced by Wes Anderson, actually. Wessel. Wessel. <laughs> now I don't know if his name is Wessel or not. And. Um, buys a tree, yep. which overlooks the three big farms of the town. Making it essentially way too tempting for Mr. Fox to not go over there and steal a bunch of shit. Yeah. he's pretty much just looking at it every day. And this is where you meet Kylie, the possum superintendent of yeah. the tree. Which I thought he was hilarious, by the way. He's really funny. Like, whenever he was just talking to him and he was just, like, stoned. <laughs> he was just out there, just right? making it look... <laughs> Well, it, it, he's he's a possum. Every time he's confronted in any way, he just, <laughs> he just freezes, freezes up. Yeah. And plays possum. Yeah. So and he's just like, I, I can't tell. You're not functioning right now. Like, give me some kind of a signal. Do you hear me or he not? Just he, he just waves his hand. <laughs> it's the Bill H. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he turns into Bill whenever he gets fried. <laughs> he goes to visit Badger, who is his lawyer. Yeah, because it's Badger, Badger, and. It's a Beaver. Third. Beaver. Badger, Badger, and Beaver, the <laughs> attorneys at law. Or it, was, it might have been Beaver, Beaver, and Badger. I yeah, remember. something like that. But Bill Murray, of course, voices Badger, and he tells him, listen, you're fucking poor, like you can't afford this house, and you shouldn't move there anyway because it's dangerous. And it's just basically a stupid move. Pretty much tells him straight up, you're making a dumb move, and he just says, okay, well, in that case... Cuss off or whatever. And then they get in the crazy <laughs> growling cuss, 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 cuss. <laughs> They're like running around the table. They're waving like their hands at each other. And then, they, then they're like sort of calmed down a little bit. And they're just like, oh yeah, that's, not, that's right. This is a movie. We're not just called animals. <laughs> I love it. It's kind of like when you see like dogs just start like growling at each other and then they're fine. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> oh, you mean like every time we come over here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. It's a constant battle for dominance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, the foxes move in, and what is it, the first night that they're living there, where Mr. Fox just He decides, hatches a plan. Yeah. A master plan. George Clooney style. Ocean Eleven. Yeah. yeah. He, he creates exactly a heist. It yeah. It's not quite Ocean's Eleven, because well, it's I know, there's really not, not planned out yeah. at all. Well, I, well there's, not, there's not other dudes, except for uh, Kylie. Yeah. <laughs> right, well, I mean, even, like, the plan doesn't go off without a hitch, or even close. Like, every single step of the way, except for the blueberries, which apparently... Dogs love beagles. Beagles, beagles specifically. Specific, yeah, specifically. Beagles. Love uh, blueberries. So they use those to knock the dogs out because they're like laced with something. <laughs> Not just the dog, but the farmer too. Because yeah. he was like... <laughs> and then he just... <laughs> and it, it, in this universe, if you die, you get X's on your eyes. If you pass out, you get uh, Swirl, asterisks, asterisks on your eyes. And if you're uh, you know, mesmerized or frightened or playing possum, you get the swirly eyes. Yeah. You're, you're Mr. Fox 101. <laughs> I did like this part a lot too because he opens the paper and there's just a sale on bandit masks. <laughs> just like, and he cuts it out, of course. Yeah, he has an unlimited supply of bandit masks in this movie because throughout the entire thing, he's just constantly here. Put this on. Yeah. To everyone, just at random times, it's like you just have pockets full of masks, bandit masks. They're on sale. They're just See, he's got it more planned out than you thought. They're just <laughs> bargains with eye hole cuts out. And Mr. Fox is. He's pretty detestable at a lot of points in this movie. He's not somebody I would want to hang out with. Yeah, he's an asshole. Yeah. 
Well, he's a charismatic from, ass from the first scene, and it's like it's one of those love hate characters because every time Meryl Streep suggests something, he's he just like, shoots it down, and he's like, "No, we're gonna do this instead." Or no, he he gives her the option, and when she picks something, he decides on the other option. Yeah, like purposely. Well, I mean, the theme of this movie is he doesn't listen. No, <laughs> yeah. and, it, and it fucks up everything yeah. because he doesn't listen to anybody because mm-hmm. <laughs> he's a wild animal, as he pretty much says. Yeah. He breaks in all three of the, yep, all three of the places. Him and the uh, superintendent of the, the possum. Which yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he's like a maintenance guy, basically yeah. superintendent. Yeah, and uh, all the while their cousin is visiting, well, Christopherson. <laughs> the perfect, most perfect diver ever, by the way. Well, he seems to be perfect in everything. <laughs> yeah, he's a ninja. He does yoga and everything else. But he's so nice, though. Like he's just. He's yeah, which makes him that much more infuriating to, <laughs> to have to exist, you know, for the other fox for trial. Ash, yeah. yeah. He's just like, stop being such a nice guy and, like, standing up for me and being awesome at everything and just being generally way better than me. Yeah. Ash is such a little fuck, too. Like, he won't let him sleep on the bed. He's like, I'll just sleep under the dresser, even if I get splinters. That's that's fine. He just gets under the bed and starts crying because his fucking dad's dying also yeah. from double pneumonia, not single pneumonia. Yeah. <laughs> well, his dad's back down to single pneumonia. He could be taking it back any time. <laughs> <laughs> One foot in the grave and three feet on the banana peel. I love that part. Yeah. <laughs> because they're foxes and they walk on four feet. That's what they never do in this movie. <laughs> what about um, when Ash is at school and his partner, who he kind of has a crush on, is just staring at Christopherson the whole time? And he's just does the guilty thing where he's like, you're supposed to be my lab partner. And she's like, I am. And he just looks at it and goes, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> he just feels shitty because he sucks at everything. And everyone else, you know, he doesn't get as much attention as he wants. His dad clearly doesn't give a fuck about anybody. He's just not being raised by a very supportive family. <laughs> yeah. And he's terrible at everything, including this preposterous and impossible to play game that has crazy rules. <laughs> whack bat, right? Yeah. Is that what it's called? Whack bat. Yeah, whack bat. The crazy you have spelling. a flaming pine cone, and then you have, <laughs> there are bases, and I don't know. Well, the, the pine cone's on fire, but only for a second because they blow it out before they throw it. So, like, what's even the point? It's basically so they can introduce the mechanic that they're going to use later in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously. I liked how they revealed that the way that they escaped the trap at the beginning was through digging because the whole time I'm like, how would have they escaped? Mm-hmm. It's a yeah, steel trap. It's like they didn't show they didn't show what happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's and like, that was sort I of was the... under the impression that they were living in captivity up until it's like, wait a second, they're not. Yeah. What about the trap? Well, <laughs> and that had to do with the plot too because that's how they got away from everything as they realized how fucking good they were at digging. Exactly, which was the whole sort of theme. It's of why uh, they should be in a hole. You know, everybody has their own strengths and weaknesses. You don't necessarily, you know, have skills to do everything. Some people have a lot of skills, but everyone has a worth and everyone is worth something. And still gave you the whole, like, moral that you shouldn't be a piece of shit because you get your tail shot off. Yeah. <laughs> like, which you can so gross. You can do sh- this bad shit, but a part of you is going to be lost with whatever the bad shit you do is. It's so weird when he didn't have a tail because it was just like a little dude with a dog head. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then he's all wearing clothes. I know. And it's like, whoop, 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 whoop. Just walking around. I think, it was gr- I think it was grosser when he pinned the tail back on. <laughs> the the he half made it, he eaten made a, tail. Yeah, he made it like a reattachable tail. Yeah. Like he made like a little, um, you know, button for it or whatever so he could put it on his ass. But half of it was, all the hair was, it was like ripped out of. off. It was so gross. I thought for sure that would have been the end of that tail. It got torn to shreds, and it was just like a gross, like, fleshy, bony, like, it's so nasty. Yeah. I would have just killed a different fox and stole his tail. So, all, all, the, all the farmers get together, and they're like, okay, we're being robbed blind by this... They, they declare open war, war on Mr. Fox. So they straight up explode where he lives after digging it up first. Yeah. Well, first they destroy the tree. 
Right. Yep. And then they start digging underneath it. The fucking uh, bulldozers yeah. and shit. That part Backhose. cracked me up because that scene where they just showed all three of them and the bulldozers just maniacally laughing at the same time. It just shows <laughs> them all going, ah! <laughs> like, just, fuck yeah. Is. Just crazy. So much work for one one little fox. That would just, that would never happen. Yeah. No one would ever devote that much shot. You just put out poison and be done with it. Yeah. Did you, anybody notice that uh, the guy that was in charge was the one that was only living on alcohol? Yeah. 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 He was like, literally drunk 24 hours a day. Besides cigarettes, he was only drinking cider. When he was also Hard a Nazi. <laughs> he was a straight Nazi. Yeah. 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 